For patients with compensated cirrhosis, how do you adjust screening, monitoring, and systemic therapy? Are there differences in treatment candidacy and safety versus advanced fibrosis? Uh, it, it would limit at least the option from one of the basically the only antifibrotic medication we have, which reserves Metaron, which is not currently indicated for patients with with uh, uh, cirrhosis. We still manage all their other cardiometabolic risk factors as appropriate and as necessary. And again, these are patients that then require like basically cirrhosis-specific care, looking for, again, varices, um, screening for liver cancer at periodic intervals here as well. And when do you transition to transplant evaluation with these patients? Yeah, so the MELD is one marker that's very helpful in at least assessing the trend over time uh, for patients. And it's a, a calculation regarding labs, uh, age, et cetera, um, that will basically tell you how concerned you should be for, for their risk of death from, from cirrhosis. Uh, in addition, it's also clinically. Are they struggling with basically volume overload, ascites, confusion, are they developing liver cancer or other tumors that kind of raise your urgency and need to evaluate them for liver transplantation? What approaches do you use for titrating doses of new MASH agents um, in patients with advanced scarring? And what laboratory or clinical red flags, for instance, prompt um, dose adjustments and cessation? Yeah, so I, I think one of the, the great benefits at our center is we have the assistance of a very large multidisciplinary team to take care of patients with mass-old um, dietitians, and I guess in this specific question, pharmacists as well who assist in titration. Um, you know, we monitor for side effects from medications like GLPs, um, mostly GI-related, so things like nausea, early satiety, vomiting, um, bowel habit changes, and, you know, these patients are also at risk for developing gallstones from their weight loss and uh, should not be given in those who may have a history of gallstone pancreatitis related to um, uh, from the from prior as well. Um, periodic check-ins with these patients in the clinic using our pharmacist as well helps really keep us on top of, again, one, how they're feeling on the drugs, their weight loss journey, as well as any potential side effects that we can mediate, dose adjust, switch therapy, consider other options as well. Yeah. And speaking of people just being on a, a weight loss journey in general, I know that's a, a common comorbidity is that patients you know, often struggle with losing weight. Um, how do you normally communicate with patients that are struggling to lose weight? And, and when do you begin and how do you navigate the conversation about things like bariatric surgery? Yeah, uh, awesome question. Um, so obviously the injectables have been a really a great boon and, and therapeutic tool um, to help facilitate weight loss and of course as a result um, reduce liver inflammation, fibrosis, diabetes, etc. But sometimes it's either not an option for patients from a coverage cost perspective and for those who may be struggling with other comorbidities, uh, bariatric surgery might be the right evaluation. Um, so working very closely with our weight loss clinic and the bariatricians, it's a whole separate journey to find the right candidates. Um, but I, I also bring it up as an option for those who may be really struggling to find any sort of therapeutic gain from their liver perspective as well as weight perspective um, to the opportunity to be seen and by the, the bariatricians here.